Major theme parks like Disney and Universal have a problem. Well, they have a lot of issues, but this one has been plaguing them since the beginning of time. The issue is with space and how they use it. Recently, the new Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios Hollywood opened, and while it opened to rave reviews from diehard and casual fans alike, the land was absolutely swamped with people, creating situations like this. Guests waiting in line for literally everything the land had to offer. The rides, the shops, the experiences, everything. Everyone was clamoring to slap on a VR headset for the Mario Kart ride, or to devour one of the new burgers at Toadstool Cafe. While sure, extremely high numbers of news outlets, reporters, vloggers, and enthusiasts may show up on the first day of anything, and will always cause some headaches and congestion, Super Nintendo Land is far from the only example of a park suffering from flawed crowd management design. We see overcrowded walkways and ride queues spilling out of the gates all over the theme park industry. Does that mean that overcrowding is an unfortunate consequence of running a world-leading vacation destination? Do designers make deliberate decisions to favor aesthetics and story over functionality? Or is it just impossible to predict where guests will flock to and how they will use the space? Let's dive into the history of theme park design and see how unexpected guest behavior was addressed in the past to better accommodate guest movement and activity. Then I'll take my best shot at redesigning the Tower of Terror queue. When Disneyland opened in 1955, there really wasn't much of a precedent for how people would or should behave in a theme park. So early artists and engineers didn't know what to expect. Today we're used to seeing fences all over as clear indicators telling us, you shall not pass. But back in 1955, there weren't any fences and people would venture off the paths and absolutely destroy the horticulture around the park, ruining the pristine vista that Walt had planned. So pretty quickly they learned that they needed to add fences. Another example of this early learning is that story that the Disney company is so proud of. Walt would sit and watch how long people held on to their trash before dropping it, and began adding trash cans every 30 feet or so to prevent trash from being left all over the park. To bring this into the modern era, companies have now learned what works and what doesn't work in theme park design. The first and most obvious solution to deal with crowds is to add more rides and more attractions. That's like a no-duh. If you have more things to do in your park, you'll have more people spread out around the park and congestion in any one part of your park will be less at any given time. We can see how effective this is when we look at the difference between Hollywood Studios and Disneyland. Hollywood Studios has about 20 attractions, while Disneyland, a park that is two-thirds the size, is packed with over 50. And that number of 20 is very generous for Hollywood Studios. So despite its relatively compact size, Disneyland is filled with things to do, which alleviate the pressure of hosting tens of thousands of guests per day. While on the other hand, with only a handful of e-ticket attractions and very few A through D ticket attractions, long lines spilling out into walkways and even into other attraction queues are a daily occurrence at Hollywood Studios. With that in mind, let's take a trip together into the land of make-believe where time is irrelevant and we have all the money we could ever dream of. And let's reimagine major theme parks into crowd-eating machines. Let's start off with something easy like Hollywood Studios, and more specifically, Sunset Boulevard and Tower of Terror. The queue for the ride is remarkably short, and it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense for an e-ticket attraction. I've seen these lines reach halfway up Sunset Boulevard, so let's expand it. Down past the current entrance to the ride, around the gift shop area, is what is supposed to be part of the hotel entrance. What if we added a valet garage off of the side of the courtyard? Instead of guests entering the garden on the left-hand side, they would instead enter the queue on the right-hand side under the covered walkway. Instead of having a weird, stale environment down there where people just kind of hang out and sip their Joffreys waiting for their party to disembark the Tower of Terror ride, we could breathe some life into the area with a few valets stationed out front near a photo op spot with an old automobile in a similar fashion to the carriage in front of the Haunted Mansion. As for the queue, it would guide guests along the right hand wall before guiding them into the valet garage. Inside would be a few vehicles left behind from a bygone era. And we could add a few details that reference not only the ride they're about to ride, but Disney history, maybe the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. Some really cool design liberties could be taken inside of this little garage. Guests would weave their way through the rows of cars before being spit out at the same entrance they walked into. Then they would hang a right up the stairs, 
or maybe a ramp because we do love to be ADA friendly. At the top, guests would pass by the current entrance to the hotel lobby to catch a sneak peek of what they're in for before heading back down into the hotel garden and eventually meeting up where the current queue starts. This extra queue length would take so much pressure off of the boulevard. Currently, it functions as the only artery for this side of the park, so removing as much clutter as possible would be ideal. So what do you think? Do you have your own ideas for improving the way parks manage their crowds? Are there landscape, layout, or queue changes that you would make to create a more pleasurable experience for everyone? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next one. Haha, -ha, I see you didn't fall for my little trick and made it to the end card. Congratulations. As a little bonus, let's take a little mini dive into improving the Slinky Dog Dash because if you've been to the park, I'm sure you've seen that line just circle out around the queue. There's like three umbrellas, it's horrible and it's sunny and oh, it's just awful. So what if instead we move that queue into the ride path? The ride is plenty high and we could just snake the queue underneath the ride. This would really give another dynamic to the ride and the queue and make it seem like you really are a toy. Let me know what you think or if there's something else that you would add. If you made it this far, thank you so, so, so much. If you really like my content, be sure to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. I'm also on social media. I'm at TE Archives on Twitter and at Themed Entertainment Archives on Instagram, where I post somewhat daily-ish. I don't know, I've gotten pretty busy lately, but I'm trying to keep up with news or history in the themed entertainment space. If you think that's interesting, feel free to go check it out. As always, thank you so much for watching. Stay creative, and I'll see you in the next one.